Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is a provocative one. Can monopolies be good for consumers? I know what you're thinking. You're having a knee-jerk reaction to this, which is that monopolies are obviously bad for consumers. With only one firm, there's less competition, less production, and higher prices. So fewer consumers are buying the good, and those that are, are paying more. Consumers are harmed by monopolies. We actually have some model confirmation for this. Think back to our standard model of Cournot competition. We've looked at this with both a monopoly and a duopoly. Imagine that we have a price function that is A minus Q, where A is some constant and Q is the total quantity produced. Under a Cournot duopoly, when firms have a symmetric marginal cost C, the total production is two-thirds A minus C. Under a monopoly, if we hold constant that marginal cost C, the monopolist total production equals A minus C divided by two. So we have two-thirds of A minus C under a duopoly and one-half A minus C under a monopoly. There is less production under a monopoly. And because if you look at the price function, the price goes down as the quantity goes up, the prices are also higher under a monopoly. And the conclusion you might want to draw from these models of Cournot competition is that, broadly speaking, monopolies are bad for consumers. But think about what happens if we actually have a merger. If that duopoly those two firms decide to merge to become one firm. It doesn't really make too much sense that the marginal cost would be identical with the monopoly as it would be with a symmetric duopoly. To understand why that might be the case, you could think about one firm in this duopoly having an advantage in production design and the other firm having an advantage in employee management. When these firms are in isolation, those benefits offset such that they both have the same marginal cost. But if they were to merge, the firm that has the advantage in production design could still use that technology in the new firm to have a good production process. And the firm that was good at having employee management can use its principles in the new company as well. Which means it stands to reason that the merged firm, the monopoly, should have a lower marginal cost. That is running in contrary to what we were looking at in the previous slide, where we assumed that the marginal cost remained static. Let's take a look at the consequences of that. Under a duopoly, remember that the total quantity produced is two thirds of A minus C. Think about what's happening in this monopoly now, where we have a changed marginal cost, where specifically M is now going to be the merged marginal cost under a monopoly. The monopoly quantity is A minus M divided by two. Well, if we look through a little bit of math, the monopolist will produce more than the duopoly would have if A minus M divided by two is larger than two thirds of A minus C. Solving for M, we have the monopolist producing more as long as M is less than four C minus A all divided by three. When this condition holds, both the merged firms and the consumer are better off under the merger, despite the fact that the merger is creating a monopoly. Those lower marginal costs of production means that the monopoly really wants to produce lots of stuff. And because so much stuff is being produced, we have more consumers buying and those consumers buying at a lower price than would have arisen under a duopoly. We actually see this theory in practice. Take a look at how the FTC interacts with antitrust law. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is the chief organization in the United States that is around to enforce antitrust law. And I pulled this straight from the FTC's website. They say that many mergers produce savings by allowing the merged firms to reduce costs, eliminate duplicate functions, or achieve scale economies. Firms will often pass merger-specific benefits onto consumers in the form of lower prices, better products, or more choices. 
the FTC is unlikely to challenge mergers when the efficiencies of the merger prevent any potential harm that might otherwise arise from the proposed merger. So in conclusion, broadly speaking, yes, monopolies are usually bad. And if there's one takeaway point that I had to give to you on monopolies, it would be that. Broadly speaking, monopolies are bad. But sometimes decreased competition has side benefits. And those side benefits, namely lower marginal costs of production here, result in better outcomes for consumers. Zooming out, what we're seeing is an application of the idea that economics is rarely zero sum. Just because firms are doing better doesn't necessarily imply that another firm is doing worse, or in this case, that consumers are doing worse. Hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.